Hey y'all, I'm Blaine Phillips. And I'm Jason LeVan. We're married, like just a minute ago, but we've been together for 14 years. We have a teenage daughter. Which means she's basically an adult, right? We're also growing a business on the side together. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Through all of that, we've learned how to improve so many aspects of our lives and show up in an amazing way. So we decided to host a podcast to share our journey with you. It's called Let's Do Life Together, because that's just what we want to do with you. So if you could use some tips and tricks on how to make life a little smoother, then you're in the right place. Come on in and let's do life. Oh my goodness, were you concerned? I was. Two weeks now, we've had issues with our sound. I know we told you we're in our new space and we are and we're loving it. But in case you didn't notice, we had an issue with sound a couple episodes back. We were rocking and rolling until around halfway through and then it got crazy. So we've worked through that and we are confident that today's message is going to be beautifully, beautifully, beautifully sound, sound beautiful. I don't know. What are the right words we're looking for there, Jason? It's going to be good. Super dope. Super dope. It's going to be super dope. Plus the message that we're talking about super dope too. So, welcome back. We are here in our new space, ready to rock and roll. We're going to talk about how super dope I am. Oh, boy. Actually, we are going to talk about how super dope he is. So, let's start there, I guess. Let me just say, it is not lost on me. I know how blessed I am to have a partner that is supportive. Because Jason is. I will. I mean, he did lead into this. Hmm interesting how you did that but it's true i'll take a minute to toot his horn he is very supportive there is really nothing that i have ever brought to him that he has shot down from decorating the cakes back in the day to saying we well i guess that's not true there was that one thing you shot down hmm. What's that? we'll talk about that later how's that working out for you now <laughs> but for the most part he's there he's not just there and doesn't like I think there's two kinds of supportive, like you bring an idea and they're like, okay, like they're not against it, but they're not for it. Like they're just like, you do you boo. And that's not Jason. There's the other side of the spectrum where he's like, okay. And he's in, he's how could, maybe he's not doing the exact thing I'm doing, but he's there to support me, to encourage me, or maybe do it right alongside of me. And for the most part, He does whatever it is that I want to do, because generally speaking, I'm the one with the crazy ideas that bring to our family things I want to change, things I want to improve. Hey, let's try this. Hey, let's do that. And he's right there. And he is my biggest cheerleader, my biggest supporter, my biggest accountability partner. And because of him and because of that support, I know that I've been able to accomplish so much and I'm forever grateful But I also know it's an area where so many of you struggle because I hear it. I talk to women daily, clients that we work with. They want to make changes in their lives. They want to improve their marriage. They want to improve their finances. They want to feel better in their skin. Insert whatever they want to do. They want to tidy up the house and declutter. And they're met with resistance from the people that are closest to them, from their partner. And it's hard. Freaking making changes is hard enough. And when you don't have support, or even worse, you have opposite of support, it's freaking hard. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how to get support from your partner for those things you want to improve and work on in your life. And I'm ready. You ready? All right, let's do it. So this is one of those five tips for doing something, right? So today we've got five tips to kind of get uh, encourage your partner to help you or support you in whatever journey you decide to start. What would you do if a podcast didn't have tips? You like giving tips, five tips. What would you do? Can I you? Don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You love five tips. I think it's helpful, too, because it's things to remember. But boy, Jason loves to put some five tip bullet points out there. So let's get this party started with how to gain support from encourage, gain support, whatever you want to say from your partner. Number one, my suggestion, our suggestion, lead by example. You don't have to make a big production out of whatever change you want to make. It doesn't have to be a grand announcement, a big thing. Um, 
let's talk about, for example, you want to just start moving your body more. You don't feel like you move very often. And to you, that can just be taking a walk. Like you want to start walking 30 minutes in the mornings for three days a week. And you really think your partner could benefit from that as well. Well, let me just tell you, (laughs) the first thing, telling them that they could benefit from doing that, not going to get you there. How would that work out for us, Jason? Right. It's it's more about, all right, this is a thing I'm going to start doing. You're welcome to join me or not. But this is going to be a priority or this is going to be a thing that I do. There you go. Now I'm going to go do that. And then just start doing it quietly without making a big show out of it. Just set your intentions, set your clock, get up, go bust out your 30 minute, walk around the neighborhood, explore some nature, and then come back. Your partner will notice. They will see what you're doing. If you're sticking to your word, they will see. If you're doing what you said, they will see. And they might notice, they will start to notice changes in you because any Any change that you make, if it's on your heart to make it and you start doing it, pride comes from that. Whether that's taking those walks you said you were going to do, whether it's spending a little less in the grocery store like you said you were going to, whatever it is, when you do what you say you're going to do, you are proud about it. And that pride starts to exude and the people around you will notice. So your partner will take notice. That's the number one thing is just lead by example. And that doesn't mean you have to toot the example horn. Just quietly do what you say you're going to do. Let them know and go rock it out. Tip number two is to give praise, which basically just means acknowledge the, in a positive way, the support that you are getting. So if you need your partner's support, it's not going to be very effective for you to constantly call out the times you did not get it along the way. So in our you know daily walk example, you would not want to call out the times that they did not go with you. So, hey, I wish you would have gone today or why didn't you go today? That's that not makes them help. feel bad. Like you don't, you wouldn't want that if that were you. The shoe was on the other foot. You don't, maybe they had intentions to walk with you that morning. Maybe they didn't, but maybe they did. And then they overslept or their knee was bothering them or whatever. You don't know what was going on on their side. So calling out it, calling it out from a negative perspective doesn't help your case. It doesn't make them feel good about it. And it very like will likely will push them further away from the thing that you want them to do the most. So giving some praise and I think there's the other side of the spectrum wouldn't, I mean, when you go overboard with the praise, like right. when I, when I say praise, I think of like when you're on that walk and when they do join you that morning, they join you just a simple comment of, Gosh, I love this time together. Thanks for coming out this morning. It's really great to start my day with you. Boom. Like, that's it. You know, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you came out this morning. I've been waiting all week to see if you would actually get up and come with me. And it's so good that you're here. And like, now you're on the other side of the spectrum. You're giving too much praise for it. And it's like, this is too much. It still has to be authentic. Yeah, that's a great point. Authentic, but just... Be quiet. (laughs) Be quiet when you want to say something negative. Don't say those things like, gosh, I wish you would get out of the bed. But speak when there is an opportunity for praise because we all want to be praised. And when just like a little kid, you did a good job. You did a great job cleaning up your toys. What do they want to do? Clean up their toys so they can get the praise. That's anybody, anywhere, including you and your partner. So give those little praises in the pockets when they deserve. And we're like a dog with a treat. We want to do it again to get the praise. Yeah. And I think call out the things that are related to not that in our walk example, it's not the walking. Like, yes, that's good to move your body for 30 minutes. But what are the other aspects that go along with that? So you feel better, you connect, you whatever the other positive impact is, not just that one particular thing that you're trying to get the support for. 
Yeah, that's a great point. And we use walking because it's something that we do. We started it. Um, if you've listened several podcast episodes back, it all started with the promise to myself about me keeping 10,000 steps a day. Jason was super supportive in that and would join me in walks around the neighborhood and stuff. And it just became a thing that we love to do. I mean, it's great. Yes, that we're moving our body, but for us, honestly, we talk and Sienna doesn't often join us. So it's time just as adults to talk through parenting things about her. I mean, we've we've covered parenting, finances, date nights, and anything in between. It's just a way to go over the day. Hey, what happened in your world today? Hey, what happened with you? And we explore where we live and we found blackberry bushes and just all kinds of things. So moving your body is great. But like you said, point out the other things that go along with that walk. All right. Number three, make the change about you. Don't point the finger at something that they need to work on. Like we're going to stick with our walking example because it works. We're going to we're going to walk our way through this episode. Oh, <sighs> you see boy. what I did there? Oh boy! <laughs> but it's true. So maybe you notice that your partner really does need to move their body. Like, I get it. They're not an active person. They have a desk job. You're concerned for their health. You know that moving their body is going to help them. Well, pointing a finger at them and saying, you need to do this, that's not going to get you there. Instead, make the change about you. Like, this is something that I want to do. I'm going to start doing it. But you can bring them into it. Like, hey, if I had your accountability, that would make it a lot easier. Just remind me that I was going to walk this morning or remind me to get up or whatever it is, remind me to do this or that. It's it's about you, but they have a, a stake in it. You know what I'm saying? Like they feel like, oh yeah, I love her and I want to support her and I want to help her. So I'm going to not be a turd and make sure that I am supporting that 30 minutes that she wants to go for that walk. And maybe I'll join her. Maybe that's an extra way to support her. But make the change about you. Am I saying that in a good way? Can you break that down for us a little more, Jason? I think that there's many things that couples probably both need. I mean, if you get honest about it, it's probably not that common that one person is super healthy and eats does all the exercise and eats you know super clean and the other does not so you're probably sharing a lot of the same habits that you're trying to change so without saying hey we need to you know focus on our nutrition or we need to start exercising because we're not fit, like we're not healthy. Make it about you. I, I notice that I don't feel well. I don't, you know, I'm tired all the time. I uh, don't have energy to play with the kids or, you know, walk to the car, whatever your scenario is. So I want to make this change. You know, I need your support. You don't have to just say that but this is a thing that I'm going to do and they'll kind of come along just organically that's a great way to put it I mean chances are we both need the same thing and imagine I mean put yourself in their shoes if your partner is to walk up to you and say hey we're super unhealthy and we need to get it together we're gonna do this don't you I mean you automatically go to defensive like I would want to throat punch Jason let's just be honest and I'd be like uh, excuse you. And I would, I would automatically get defensive. I would want to throw a punch in for calling me out. And then I would want to be like, oh, well, look at you. I'm pretty sure I saw you eat potato chips and drink beer last night. Like that's, that's where we go. Like you don't want that reaction from your partner, but that's the natural reaction. So make it about you come inward. All right. Number four is to get out of the moment. So if you're making a decision that is tied to some emotion, you have to let that emotion pass before you try to make that change and get that support from your partner. Aren't all decisions tied to emotion? In my world, they are. Right. But just in the in that particular heightened state of emotion, um, 
you've got to get beyond that. So what's an example for that? Well, I think about that walk. <laughs> like if we're going to stick with our walking, if I got up that morning and I, you know, we talked about it, I'd let Jason know this was a thing I was going to do and leading by example. And he had joined me a couple times and yada, yada, here we are. And I get up and he didn't, whatever reason, again, remember, we don't know what his reason is, but he didn't. But I spend my 30 minutes walking just stewing about the fact that he didn't join me on that walk. I don't know what he's doing. He's just laying in that darn bed like, I really wish he was out here with me. I'm sweating and it's hot and he needs to get as healthy as I do. And what your emotions, my emotions would be heightened. We would be in the midst of that. Or another example is you guys have agreed to work on your finances and you're reviewing the bank statement from that week and you see that your partner has eaten out three times for lunch that week. You don't know the scenario, but you have and you're like, oh, are you freaking kidding me? Like that's $30 and we said that we weren't going to do that. And you're riled up, Jack, like your emotions are high. The time to con- to talk about that is not then. Like here I am walking back in the door sweaty after my 30 minutes and he's like easy breezy lemon squeezy having his coffee in the kitchen and I'm like rah, 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 rah. why didn't you join me? I thought we were in this together. I thought we were doing this. Well automatically he's going on the defensive. We're not I'm riled up. He didn't he wasn't riled up, but now he is because I'm attacking him. When emotions are high with anything, whether it's that walk or whether it's when you're reviewing the bank statement or whatever it is, you're not going to get anywhere by having a conversation during that, except for further hurt and further distance between where you want to go together. So just take a minute. Or if you're me, I need like a day. I'm going to need a day to come down. Take some time and then come back around to it when everybody's chill and the emotions aren't high and you can really discuss it, right? Yeah, and I think remember number three, that it's about you. It's You're hoping for support from your partner. It's not their thing. It's not their commitment. It's your commitment and... It's about the changes that you're trying to make. And if you keep that in perspective, I think that will help with the uh, emotional side of it. It's true. And I mean, we're very clear who's way more emotional over here than who's not. Who is it? Hmm. Anyway, leading into number five, I think this rolls in. Our last tip is you have to give it time. I know that seems like, I don't know if that seems like a no brainer or not, but here's what I think of when I give this tip. Whatever change you want to make, chances are you didn't just wake up and decide that morning, oh, I'm I, I'm going to start walking more. Like you've been building to that. Like you've been thinking about, gosh, I don't feel great. I can't make it up a flight of stairs without deep breathing. I have low energy. My joints hurt, like whatever. you've. This has been a process in your brain of these little thoughts of, I need to move more. It would feel better if I moved more. Like you've been building to this. And so all of a sudden you decide. So finally, you've been thinking about it, stewing over it a week, days, even months. Sometimes these changes that we finally get to. And then you come to your partner with it. You spring it on them and you're like, okay, don't feel good. Time to move. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to walk five days a week. And like, they're not there. They didn't know that you've been thinking about this. Chances are, unless you've talked about it before, chances are they didn't know what's been stewing in your mind, that this has been brewing. And so it's out of nowhere and we throw it at them and expect them to, I do this. I'm super guilty of this with Jason. Like I brew, I stew, and then I'm like, all right, here we go. This is the change we're going to make. And he's like, whoa, uh, hold on. I didn't know we needed to improve in this area. So you got to give them time to process what you're saying, to catch up, and to work it out in their mind, right? And you've probably also predetermined how you expect them to support you or to act in this particular scenario. So at the same time of giving them time, you have to give them the opportunity to support in their way and kind of meet you meet in the middle if you need to. So you've got to kind of come off your expectations 
that you've predetermined in your head before talking about it at all and say, all right, you know, go back to this is a thing I'm doing for me. Um, they'll see it. You're, you're going to start doing it. They're going to come along eventually, probably in their own way, in their own time. So you can't force it. Are you talking about me? <laughs> this totally happens. I do. I stew on ideas and then I come to him and I'm like, hey, we got to change this and here's how we're going to do it. <laughs> I didn't give him a second to digest it. And then I, Jason is very pragmatic and very good at this. And maybe your partner is as well. He'll be like, okay, cool. Like once he thinks about it, like I see where you're coming from. I understand the need to improve X, Y, or Z. Well, did you think about this? Like, maybe here's a better way. Like I'm maybe I planned I'm gonna walk every day at lunchtime. And he's like, Well, that's cool, but remember you have this thing to do at lunchtime, so it's not gonna happen and you're setting yourself up for failure. So why don't you think about this time of day to walk or whatever? Like maybe they have a different approach that's even better than yours. So be prepared to give them some time and also, like you said, relinquish the way that you're going to get there. Because most of the time, I'll be honest, Jason's ideas and strategies to get me there are better than mine because they're more thought out. I'm like, woo, all right, let's go. Time to go. Because <laughs> I'm super dope. Oh, boy. Apparently, this is the episode where we <laughs> just talk about how super dope Jason is. Just in case anyone to know, Jason is super dope. So, hey, super dope, you want to take us back through the five tips to remind us? All right, that was already five, huh? So we're gonna. You want to lead by example. Remember, it's your your change that you're trying to get support for, um, or your new habit, whatever it is. So you're just gonna start doing it. You want to give praise. So that's tip number two: is to you know be positive, um, be authentic with your praise. Number three is to remember to make it about you. So there's a new habit that you want in your life. So your partner hopefully is going to support you in that, but it's not it's not a habit for that person. It's yours. Number four was to get the emotions out of it, to get past the moment. So if emotions are high around a particular thing or time to time when you did not get that support or you're not on the same page, then get beyond that. Is that the easiest one for you? Yep. (laughs) And number five is just to give it time. So again, you can't force your expectations on your partner. So give that person some time and give the opportunity for them to support in their way, not necessarily how you predetermine. Listen, we know that change is hard. We have had our head down chasing change actively for the last five years, but even before that, you're changing. We are always looking to grow and be a little bit better than we were the next day, but that doesn't make it any easier. (laughs) Like creating new habits, doing new things, improving in areas is hard, but it's a lot harder without support, especially support from the person that is closest to you in life, the person that you're supposed to be doing life together with. So that's what we hope today is these tips will help to remind you areas that you can improve that to, to make it easier to work with your partner to get to where you both want to go. And maybe this is the episode that you share with your partner. Maybe they need to hear this too from their perspective and you're both on the same page. So all you need to do is copy the link and text it to them and say, hey, I listened to Blaine and Jason today and he's super dope apparently. And I think this is great advice that we both should hear. So whatever changes you want to make, take these tips Put them in and do it together because they're hard, but they're so much easier when you have support. Yep. And if you if you need, I think, more specific um, support from us on this, just hit us up on the socials and we're happy to provide some uh, extra tips, tips number six through whatever. Oh boy. Always a number with you guys. It's true. Send Jason a DM and ask him for tip number six. Let's see what that is. Right. Or send your partner over to me. I'll (laughs) tell them the benefits of supporting 
your partner. Oh, that's that could a be another episode. Oh. Write that one down. Uh, write that one down. That's another episode. <laughs> All right. Until next week. <laughs>